Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Capital City Sports. I'm your host, Jack Taylor, and this week, love and humidity was in the air in Columbia, South Carolina, as another Valentine's Day has come and gone. And if the holidays left you feeling particularly disappointed, tune in and cheer yourself up as we bring you all the best that Gamecock Athletics has to offer. <laughs> Justin Lindler was at Colonial Alpharina to start the week off as the women's basketball team took on Georgia Thursday night. Thanks, Jack. The Gamecocks were back at home tonight after an unsuccessful trip to UConn on Monday night. However, tonight they looked to bounce back against the Georgia Bulldogs. Gamecocks came out in the first quarter slow on offense, so head coach Don Staley pulled her starters and put in her bench. Destiny Henderson came in and gave a huge boost of energy, scoring six points within a two-minute span. The second quarter, Georgia came out with more discipline and determination for the ball, forcing 10 overs of South Carolina in the first half. The Gamecocks went into halftime with just a four-point lead, 29 to 25. The third quarter was a back-and-forth affair, but South Carolina stretched out its largest lead of the game up to nine, but Georgia would not go away. Late in the fourth quarter, the Bulldogs tied it up at 53, but the veteran Denia Kleine came up clutch, hitting a big jumper for South Carolina. The Gamecocks closed the game out by sinking late free throws where they shot 80% from for the game. The veteran Denia Kleine finished with 12 points and the freshman point guard Destiny Henderson came off the bench scoring 14 points. South Carolina defeated Georgia with a final score of 65-57. The Gamecocks will be back on the road this week when they travel to Gainesville on Sunday to play the Florida Gators. For Capital City Sports, I'm Justin Lindler. Thanks Justin. Baseball is back on campus, and Eli Bram was at Founders Park to catch all the action from opening day as the Gamecocks took on Liberty Diversity on Friday. Thanks, Jack. It was a familiar sight for Gamecock fans in Columbia as the South Carolina baseball team laced up their cleats for an opening day matchup against the Liberty Flames. And although the names on the fronts of the jersey were familiar, there were many new names on the back of the jerseys, and those fresh faces performed well in a hard-fought 6-5 loss in extra innings. Carmen Blitzinski made the final start of the season a year ago and was trusted with the ball to start the 2019 campaign by head coach Mark Kingston. After a strong opening inning by Blitzinski, he got run support from one of those fresh-faced Gamecocks. Freshman Brady Allen blasted a three-run homer to give South Carolina an early 3-0 lead. But that lead wouldn't last long as Liberty managed a liner that cleared the bases and tied the game in the bottom half of the inning. The Gamecocks would retake the lead later in the game courtesy of junior college transfer Andrew Eister. The game went back and forth the rest of the way before going into extra innings, where a pass ball ended up sinking the Gamecocks and giving Liberty the final score of the night. The game ended up 6-5 and gave the Gamecocks a tough start to their season. After multiple missed opportunities tonight, Carolina will wrap up its series against Liberty on Saturday and Sunday. For Capital City Sports, I'm Eli Brand. Back to you, Jack. Thanks, Eli. The men's basketball team returned to Colonial Alpharina this Saturday as they took on Texas A&M. Jake Homan was in coverage as the Gamecocks tried to get above 500. Thanks, Jack. The Gamecocks look to bounce back from their loss on Wednesday night against Tennessee as they take on their SEC rivals, Texas A&M Aggies. The Gamecocks struggled early, missing shots and causing turnovers in the first half. Meanwhile, A&M had most of their shots fall. Gamecocks offense looked to find some type of rhythm early in the first half, but trailed by seven at the break. In the second half, they surged back with some explosive offense with the help from freshman A.J. Lawson. He was lights out from beyond the arc, shooting six of seven from the three-point line and had a game high of 23 points for the Gamecocks. The final score of this one was 84 to 77, improving the Gamecocks' record to now above 500, and as they stand fourth in the SEC conference with an 8 and 4 record. The Gamecocks came out with a win in this one, and they hope to establish their winning streak on Tuesday night as they take on the Ole Miss Rebels. For Capital City Sports, I'm Jay Coleman. Back to you, Jack. Thanks, Jake. 
The Gamecock softball team also started their season this week as they hosted the Gamecock Invitational, where they took on St. John's University this past Sunday. Sylvia Ramirez was at Beckham Field to get all the action from the game. The Gamecocks end the game in a blow against St. John's University, 9-1. The game started off slow with no runs in the first inning, but it wasn't until the second inning that Mackenzie Bozel went up to bat with her hit. Her hit gave the Gamecocks a 2-0 lead over St. John's University. With a runner on first and a runner on second, Kayla Droder hit a home run to lead the Gamecocks 6-1. The game was called at the end of the fifth inning, ending with Jana Johns' hit, her hit that led the Gamecocks to a total of nine runs to defeat St. John's University 9-1. The Gamecocks won't be back on the field until Wednesday against Charleston Southern. For Capital City Sports, I'm Sylvia Ramirez. Back to you, Jack. Thanks, Sylvia. And last but certainly not least, Natalie Smith was able to close out our week and the opening weekend series as the Gamecock baseball team looked to defeat Liberty this past Sunday. Thanks, Jack. The Gamecocks cap off opening weekend with a victory against Liberty. Liberty strikes first with an RBI double by Drew Bogman and an error on third baseman Jacob Olson leads to the Flames taking an early two-run lead in the top of the first. TJ Hopkins homers in the bottom of the fourth inning, cutting Liberty's lead to one. South Carolina tied the game as Noah Campbell grounded into a fielder's choice in the bottom of the fifth. Strong pitching and defense allow the Gamecocks to head into the bottom of the ninth inning, tied. Wild pitch allows Luke Berryhill to score, giving the Gamecocks an exciting walk-off win. South Carolina wins the series 2-1. They will host Winthrop University here at Thunders Park on Tuesday at 4 p.m. For Capital City Sports, I'm Natalie Smith. Back to you, Jack. For Capital City Sports, I'm Jack Taylor.